This dream was September 4th, 2022. I'm going to read from my notes. So it started off, we were in a car, there was three of us. A man was driving, a sister in the middle, and I was next to the passenger door. The drive was scary and dangerous. The road was never normal. We were on a long journey to get to our destination. Mountains with drop-offs, narrow roads, jungle-like terrain, not normal paved highways. The roads were either terrain, dirt, mountainous, or grass or moss. We were in destitute areas where no other people were. The moss terrain was the final turn and it was narrow, completely sideways. I remember the driver saying, hold on, hold on. This is gonna be a rough one. Just hold on. I was surprised we didn't tip over. It was so steep. It was so steep. So the scene changed and we were inside a house and we were on the second floor near the bedrooms. I noticed the house was old. I can't say what era it was from, but it was old. It was dusty, worn, and abandoned. But I could see the newer part, of, there was a newer part of the house on the other half of this house. I could see the fresh white paint and modern lighting. So we peeked in a few bedrooms of the older side of the house. I noticed not much, it was abandoned. I didn't see any people. Everything seemed in order. We continued and now we're in the newer side of the house. It seemed we were there to investigate because I remember we had to be really quiet and almost like we were like tiptoeing around. So we started investigating each bedroom. So it started off where in the modern side of the house, it started off where the beds were made, the rooms were in order and nothing looked out of place. But then it started to progressively get more and more messy. The first bedroom I noticed was, it was just that the bed was not made. That was the only thing. And then um, as we continued, um, it was messier and messier. That first bedroom I saw where I said the bed was unmade and that was the only thing, I remember saying to the other two I was with, I said, that used to be my room. So we continued to check the rooms. Uh, there were so many you couldn't check them all. And we were just starting to kind of peek inside the rooms at that point because there were too many to go all the way inside and investigate. So as we were nearing the end, I could see the staircase going downstairs. The final bedroom, I glanced in the door because the door was ajar. And the first thing I noticed was broken glass everywhere, just shattered. Um, it was brown glass from brown beer bottles. Uh, the bedroom was complete disarray. There was dishes, you know, d dirty clothes on the floor, um, dirty dishes, garbage, you name it. Then I noticed a man on the bed, half on the bed and half on the floor, dead. I knew he was dead. The girl I was with had a plastic bag and she grabbed some glass, some of the broken glass, put it in the bag and a few other items. And at that moment, we just realized very quickly that this is dangerous and we need to get out of here immediately. So we rushed down the big staircase to find the man of the house. Now I had vaguely remembered seeing him earlier, um, but we walked through the living room and the dinette area, um, heading towards the kitchen, I knew that's that's where the man of the house was. So there was trash everywhere. It was disgusting. Um, old food, garbage, again, dirty clothes, rotting food, uh, papers, you name it, um, including dog feces. Then I noticed this white plastic that was an attempt to cover up all this disgusting stuff on the floor. It crossed my mind like, 
why didn't they just clean it up and throw it away versus going through all the trouble to take this white plastic with tape and covering up the mess. It was an attempt to cover it up. So we headed then to the kitchen and there was the man of the house sitting at the kitchen table. He was surrounded with filth, um, papers, magazines, again, garbage everywhere. He had these huge headphones on, just really big ones. And his head was down reading something. I'm not sure what he was reading exactly, but we tried to get his attention and we were saying, we need to tell you we found a dead body upstairs and he didn't hear us. He was so immersed in what he was hearing in the headphones and what he had his head down uh, looking at reading. He couldn't hear us. So we raised our voice again and again. He still didn't hear us. Finally, we shook him physically and that kind of broke his his trance and he takes his headphones off and we're like there's a dead body in your house upstairs and he he looked like he was in a trance like he was dazed and confused in his eyes he he didn't it, it like didn't register what we were saying like he just didn't care or didn't believe us i don't know but at that moment i noticed these two guys uh they came running down from upstairs they were younger and when I saw them, I knew that one of them was the son of this man and the other was his best friend. I also recognized them, like I had known them before or hung out with them before or something. They went on to explain um, how they had to murder this man upstairs because he was talking bad about one of their sisters but then they realized they murdered the wrong guy at that moment i realized we need to leave these guys are dangerous and their dad doesn't care we need to get out of here end of dream so as you can see of the t with the title here in ezekiel about a rebellious house this is the rebellious house of god who is not ready for the Lord's return. Let me start with the beginning of the dream. So we were in the car and I believe this is pointing to the narrow path of salvation. It was difficult. It, wa it wasn't easy. It had, you know, um, drop-offs. Uh, it was very narrow. We were sideways. Um, I, I could go deeper into that, but for the sake of time, I won't. Um, it also is pointing to the parable of the sower and seed falling on good ground or bad ground. Now, in this house, there were both. There, there were houses that were, or I'm sorry, bedrooms that were in order, but there were also the majority were not in order, as you can see. Like I said, a rebellious house, you can clearly see what's going on in this. The old side of the house can represent the old man uh, where you're they're unable to leave behind childish ways of thinking, feeling, or doing, unable to break free from past sins, old habits, attitudes, or mindsets. The house is sanctification a willingness to change or take responsibility for your sins, for your actions, your behaviors. Uh, the new side of the house could be the new man. But like I said, there were some bedrooms that were in order where the beds were made. They were, um, everything was in place. It was all straightened up and ready for the master to come home. But then there were other rooms that were completely, complete chaos, so much so where we see uh, there was a murder that took place. So there's a, a, a murdering spirit roaming around. We see the broken beer bottles, the brown broken beer bottles. So I have a few thought, thoughts on that. So I looked up why are beer bottles brown and it turns out to my amazement that when hops in beer are exposed to strong light, bottom line is the brown glass 
protects the beer from the light. So it stops the light from getting in. So how perfect is that for this dream? Because the light is not getting in these people that, that have these dirty, you know, rooms. Their, their rooms are not in order. Their home is not in order. And it shows with the brown beer bottles, the light is not shining through to give them light. So, you know, the scripture that says man love darkness and he run, darkness runs from the light. So when you're in sin, you're going to run from the light. Um, it can also represent broken vessels. You know, uh, we are vessels for God. Some are broken, some are, you know, um, not fit for the master master's use some are fit for the master's use so we see both of that in in the um, household so then moving forward um the dead man the the spirit of of murder so we know the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy um so the dead man represents being spiritually dead um meaning this person has wandered away from God. Um, this person is without the Holy Spirit, a backslider. It shows ungodliness, the corrupt nature, unwilling to pay the price to follow Jesus and unable to receive spiritual truth. So dirty and filthiness of the house. Oh, it's just disgusting. And so a few scriptures. Um, James 1 21 wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self so if you hear the word but you don't do it you are in self-deception because you're telling yourself I don't really have to do what what the Lord says I don't really have to follow the scriptures for life but the truth of the matter is yes we re really do we absolutely do because you will not have life so then i see this plastic white covering over the dog feces the garbage you name it it was disgusting so in, in an attempt to cover up this garbage they're trying to cover up sin they're trying to hide sin. It's hidden sin, hidden sin. So there's so many scriptures on this. I'll put them all in the description box, but I'll just read a few. If you hide your sins, you will not succeed. If you confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. So this man with a hardened heart is the an elder or a pastor. It's clearly not God. Um, so this could represent the teachers on YouTube, the teachers, uh, pastors that are teaching a lie, um, teaching carnal Christianity, teaching hyper grace. They've deceived many. It's very sad. So this man had these headphones on. This is deaf, a spiritual deafness, lack of spiritual hearing, a hardened heart without spiritual understanding, a deaf and dumb spirit. He doesn't have eyes to see or ears to hear with the headphones. And he has a seared conscience. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, Now the spirit speaketh expressly in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Um, and then Ezekiel 12, 2, um, coming back to the title of this video, son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, which has eyes to see, but does not see and ears to hear, but does not hear for they are a rebellious house.